This tractor may be more than a century old, but it looks and runs great for its age. It's a Fairbanks Morse 1525, owned by the Bice family of Waco, Texas. I've been partial to single cylinder tractors, and that's what this is, a single cylinder 25 horse Fairbanks uh, Morris engine uh, model N. They sold it as a stationary or uh, portable power unit as a uh, Fairbanks Morris model N 25 horsepower. And they also use that same engine in, a tra in this tractor. They only built these tractors about four years. So uh, they weren't in the, in the tractor business for the, all that long, but they were very, very good in their core competency, which was in stationary power engines. This eight ton tractor boasted an engine bore of 10 and a half inches with an 18 inch stroke for a whopping 1,557 cubic inches in one cylinder. It was advertised at 25 belt and 15 drawbar horsepower at 250 RPMs, but its actual power was likely much greater. It feels like a new tractor because it almost is. <laughs> All the gearing is, uh, was very, very good on it, so we didn't have to do anything to the bull gears. The pinion gears were fine. It's very quiet, actually, if it wasn't for that pumping noise that's up front that, that creates the power, uh, it would uh, be very quiet. It's just a real joy to drive. One of the things I like about it is the radiator on the front of it. It's screen cooled, and so uh, you get to go in here and see all the water being pumped through the uh, radiator and down. Uh, they actually even had screens uh, or shutters on the, uh, the tractor so that when wind is blowing real hard that it kept the water inside the radiator rather than getting it swept outside. So that's kind of a unique feature that I like about it. How this tractor ended up in the Bice family collection makes for an interesting story. It took Lou years to finally track it down because a friend didn't want to reveal its location. He'd only tell us, tell us oh, that's uh, Fairbanks is down in Sugarland. Well, that was a tale that he was telling us because the tractor was really in Angleton, uh, only about 17 miles from the Gulf of Mexico. And when he first found that tractor, he didn't want anybody else to know about it, any of the other collectors, but he always liked to talk about it. That went on for years. And as a collector, of course, I always would ask somebody, you know, hey, oh, you're from Sugarland. Do you know anything about an old single cylinder Fairbanks tractor that would be around there? No, no, no. Well, uh, our friend, Lewis Miller, he uh, was in his well into his 80s, I guess, when he finally decided that he wasn't gonna to get to buy that tractor. So he told a good friend of his about it, and a mutual collector that uh, was a friend of ours as well. And so his name was Frank Turner, and so Frank goes down and he somehow cuts a deal with the, the owner of the tractor or the owner's uh, descendants. I was fortunate that uh, Frank Turner decided that it was too big of a project for him. That's because the weather hadn't been kind to the 1525. This Fairbanks is believed to have powered a cotton gin until the 1920s, then parked in a grove where the Texas Gulf Coast climate eroded most of the tractor. We've got some pictures of it before uh, we moved it. We actually had to move it using a crane because the rear wheels were in such bad condition that they wouldn't roll. Uh, nothing would roll. In fact, the front end of that tractor was completely missing when we got it out of uh, its uh, original location. The first time I went out and looked at the Fairbanks, I was really amazed that it really hadn't been abused during its lifetime. It was just the fact that Mother Nature basically uh, caused it to deteriorate and go back into uh, rust and dust. A network of parts-finding enthusiasts and dedicated iron forgers and fabricators teamed up to assemble the many pieces needed for the 1525, but it was Premier Restorer Wendell Couch who handled the bulk of the work. We sent it up to Wendell and uh, Bethel, Ohio, and he and his crew, they worked on it a solid year to bring it back to its uh, condition. 
So we shipped the tractor up there in October. We got it back in September. So for a full year, this was a major project that they had. And uh, he and his team just did an outstanding job to bring it back to life. Lou loves collecting and restoring these pieces of America's farming history. And it's become a family tradition passed down through the generations. I like to tell people that uh, we were collecting uh, before we were born. I'm sure there is some tractor that uh, dad drug mom to um, go find when she was pregnant. So yeah. we like to say <laughs> that we were in the womb rotten rust. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, family albums and family pictures that uh, have both of us, you know, as babies in either strollers or backpacks, you know, in front of steam engines and uh, all, all over the country. It's been really good to have a hobby that um, we can all do as a family and that we're all interested in. And um, so when we uh, go on shows or go on trips, you know, most of our family vacations revolved around some sort of rust in one way or another. And business trips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, always trying to schedule business trips around tractor shows. As the Bice's classic tractor collection continues to grow, you can expect the Fairbanks Morse 1525 to remain a family favorite. I'd probably put this in the top five of the tractors that we uh, have in our collection today. It's really uh, a treasure that uh, I'm just fortunate to have the, the ability and uh, the resources that uh, we could be a caretaker for it and make sure that it, uh, uh, it came back to life.